is 7 News. Tonight, the death of a young Perth footballer. I just can't believe it. An on-field clash leaves family and friends shattered. Olympic legend Murray Rose loses his fight with cancer. A breakthrough for a Perth policeman almost killed by a mosquito bite. And West Coast crushing win against the AFL's newest team. And he's got five. But at a cost. Oh. From the studios of Seven Perth, Emmy Kabansky. Good evening. The family of a young Perth footballer who died after an on-field clash say his teammates did everything they could to save him. Joshua Henderson suffered a fatal heart attack moments after an accidental collision in a marking contest at Mosman Park. Jessica Vanderen reports. <laughs> Josh Henderson was 21. He was a beautiful boy. He was my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. My eldest son, my, 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 my beautiful son. And I loved him very much. Fit, strong and healthy, they thought. He was 21 years old. He just celebrated old. his 21st birthday and uh, he had a lot of such big hopes and dreams and I just can't believe it. A carpenter, he'd returned to university to become a project manager like his dad. Also an aspiring singer, a part-time model, friends say the most unlikely victim of a sudden heart attack. He's super fit, um, admired by blokes, the amount of food he could eat and mm -hmm. still look that trim. Josh Henderson died after an on-field clash yesterday at Mossman Park. Trying to take a mark, his head hit an opponent hip. Today teammates returned to Tom Perrot Oval to pay their respects. Josh was a kind-hearted boy who loved everyone and was loved by everyone. He was a proud footballer and a true gentleman. Josh's death has left many in shock. Eagle Nick Natanui sending his support. The family say they can't believe Josh's heart simply gave out. He was too healthy. The 21-year-old had a metal plate inserted in his skull after a nightclub assault two years ago. The family fear that left him vulnerable. Doctors gave Josh the all-clear to play footy. But these are contact sports. Life is a risky business. The AMA says a helmet probably wouldn't have saved him. And I don't think there was anything else that could have been done to save him. Jessica Vanderen, 7 News. Australian swimming legend Murray Rose has died after a battle with leukaemia. A dual Olympian, Murray Rose was the first swimmer to win the 400 metre freestyle event twice in a row. He won a total of four Olympic gold medals. He became a household name at 17, winning three gold medals at Melbourne's Olympic Games in 1956. That success continued, taking home a gold, silver and bronze in Rome four years later. The first swimmer to win the 400 metre freestyle event twice in a row, an honour now shared with Ian Thorpe. The swimming great was honoured in 1999 as a legend of Australian sport by the Australian Sport Hall of Fame. A torchbearer at Sydney's Olympics, He was also one of just eight flag holders. Swimming Australia released this statement. Murray Rose is a part of the swimming DNA in this country. His success inspired a generation and our thoughts and prayers are with his family and close friends. Murray Rose died early this morning in Sydney after losing his battle with leukaemia. He was 73. A teenager's in hospital tonight after a suspected play flight let him critically injured. Blake Johnson, the 19-year-old, was taken to Royal Perth Hospital early this morning. That's right, Amy. The teenager spent a few hours at Fremantle Hospital first. Doctors decided to transfer the 19-year-old here about 5 o'clock this morning. Now, police are investigating exactly what happened. They believe he was play fighting with a mate in Yanjibup when he was injured, but they haven't been able to talk to him because he's in a critical condition tonight, so they're still unclear 
is exactly what happened. What his injuries are are also unclear, but police are treating this very seriously. Emmy. OK, thanks, Blake. A swimmer has been dragged unconscious from the water at City Beach. It happened late this afternoon. Another swimmer swam out to the man when they noticed he was having trouble. He was carried back to the shore where lifesavers and paramedics performed CPR. The man is tonight in hospital. Water police have travelled to Broome to investigate the death of a commercial pearl diver. The 22-year-old man from Victoria became distressed yesterday during a dive 88 nautical miles south of Broome. A man's been killed after a crash, his car crash swerving to avoid a kangaroo in Harvey, south of Perth. The 34-year-old passenger was thrown from the car when it hit a tree on Honeymoon Road last night. The driver and another passenger weren't hurt. And a father and son have been flown to Perth after crashing into each other on bikes. The 12-year-old boy was on a mountain bike, his dad on a motorbike when they collided on an unsealed road near Kalgoorlie. The boy suffered serious chest injuries. A West Australian police officer left brain damaged after a mosquito bite has had a breakthrough in his recovery. A technique shown in the Oscar-winning movie The King's Speech is helping Ryan Marin talk again. Just a few words from his favourite footy magazine. But a huge step forward for Ryan Marin. <laughs> Ryan's partner, Tony Misitano, says this is the clearest she's heard him in a year. The key, the headphones in Ryan's ears playing music at the same time. Over and over again. Tony saw the same technique in the Oscar-winning film The King's Speech. The, the stuttering King spoke it. clearly when listening to music. No Hollywood here. This progress is real, helped by Aussie rocker's powder finger in Ryan's ears. It's been one year since Constable Marin got Murray Valley encephalitis from a mosquito while working in the Kimberley. He's in Chicago on an intense rehabilitation course. Last week, Ryan, who's 30, took his first steps. Better than last time. Much better. Blake Johnson, 7 News. Diggers in Afghanistan have unveiled their latest defence against the Taliban's most deadly weapon. A new armoured vehicle convoy is giving our troops the best protection yet against improvised bombs. Alex Hart filed this report from the front line. On this day 100 years ago, the world's most famous ship, the Titanic, hit an iceberg and sank, taking more than 1,500 lives with it. Those victims have been remembered in services at sea and around the world. TV stars from around the country have converged in Melbourne for this year's Logies. Emily Angwin has spent the afternoon on the red carpet at Crown Casino. I spoke to her a short time ago. Good evening, Emmy. Well, there certainly is a massive buzz here tonight at the 2012 Logie Awards in Melbourne at Crown Casino. The stars have well and truly started arriving. As you can imagine, they look absolutely stunning. There's a real elegance and lots of colour here tonight. And let me tell you, the boys are shaping up pretty good as well. In particular, five teenage boys which have the crowds going absolutely wild. One Direction turned up and... <laughs> You, could, you wouldn't be able to believe it. The, the crowd went absolutely crazy and I spoke to them a short time ago. Oh, the fans have been incredible. It's been there are dozens of Channel 7 shows and personalities nominated tonight. So all the very best to everyone involved. And I spoke to a couple of the nominees a short time ago. Extraordinary. I've never seen any red carpet like this before. I mean, I know One Direction are, are big, but I didn't know they were that big. There's definitely a buzz here. I wasn't. Everyone's like, are you nervous? I didn't think I was, but yeah, I'm I'm talking fast and I'm acting weird. So it's shaping up to be an amazing night here tonight. Back to you, Emmy. Emily Angwin there at the Logie. Still to come here on 7 News, find out what three men are accused of stealing from SeaWorld. Plus tornado terror. Millions of Americans on alert as more than 60 twisters hit the Midwest. And a show of strength from North Korea. And that's all in sport. John Worsfold joins us tomorrow night. Now here's Emmy. Good night. Thanks, Barra. The weather's next and then the return of Dancing with the Stars. Stay with us.
Some glorious sunshine to cap off our weekend and there's a bit of rain on its way this week. Today's maximum was 26.5 degrees at 2.23 this afternoon. Overnight we dropped to 11.3 degrees. And right now in Perth it's 21.2 degrees. To the satellite chart, clear skies in the north due to dry and warm easterly winds. Meanwhile, low cloud over the southwest is bringing a few showers. Around WA, a weak cold front will brush the far southwest, bringing isolated showers south of Bustledon to Walpole and contracting to coastal parts by the evening. Across the country tomorrow, showers in Brisbane, a late shower for Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne will stay fine, a morning shower for Hobart and 28 degrees for Adelaide. On the water, west to south westerly winds at 8 to 23, 13 knots rather, tending east northeasterly later in the morning. So for the start of the working week, it will be sunny and 26 degrees, partly cloudy Tuesday, a shower or two for Wednesday and 25 degrees. Uh, early morning cloud and coastal rain on Thursday, clearing and partly cloudy on Friday. And that's 7 News for this Sunday. Thanks for your company. Natalia Cooper brings you the 4.30 News live and local tomorrow. Then 7 News at 6 with Rick Arden and Susanna Carr. Stay with us now, though, for the return of Dancing with the Stars. Good night. <laughs>